Hello, in this video I'm going to go through three types of utility software, backup, antivirus and compression. But before I do, I just want to add another term which you don't necessarily need to know, but I think is just useful to have in your mind when you are trying to think about the different concepts in this um, section of the course. So system software. System software is sort of the opposite to application software. So we've got application software designed for the end user doing tasks which you don't necessarily need a computer to do, whereas system software is used to ensure the smooth running of a computer system. So you do need a computer. This software only really exists because computers exist. Whereas something like Microsoft Word, we could write letters and documents on paper. We don't need a computer. So therefore, it's not system software, it is application software. Whereas something like Windows Defender is not application software, but it is system software. Because Windows Defender, which is antivirus, we wouldn't need antivirus software if we didn't have computers. So it's only there because computers exist, therefore it's system software. Now, that's not that important for you to know, but I just think it's useful to have in your mind. What you must know are there are two examples of system software. So we've got operating systems and we've got utility software. Operating systems will get covered in the next video. So just to define utility software, this is software which analyzes, configures, optimizes, or maintains a system. So it really helps it run, do the sort of jobs which are going to generally improve our computer system. So backup software is an example. Again, if we didn't have a computer, we wouldn't need to have backup software. So therefore it is system software and not application software. So a backup, as I'm sure you'll know, is a copy of data which you make in case something happens to the original. So you might have a hard drive, you might have some important files on the hard drive, and a backup will put it somewhere else. So you might have another hard drive sat somewhere else, you might have cloud storage, which is where you put your backup, that's quite common nowadays. So backing up the data means you make a copy and the copy goes somewhere else. Now in terms of limitations, well, for example, you might make a second version of the document, you might make some changes, maybe add stuff to it. Now, if it gets deleted or you get attacked or you lose it by mistake or it gets damaged, whatever happens and you lose your data, if you've got a backup, you are able to restore your file by copying it across from your backup. Now, the slight issue can be if you've got a new version, or well, the new version may not be the latest one backed up. In that case, you might get your old version back and may not be quite as complete. So I guess my point is, if you're going to back up, you should do it often and you should make sure any important changes are backed up, otherwise you might restore it and it might not be the version you want. So I think why backups are important is relatively obvious, right? We want to make sure we've got copies in case things go wrong, because things do go wrong. But in terms of some negatives, like I just said, you might not have the latest copy, but to get around it, you might decide to all the time, all the time have full backups. And you might really often back up your data in full. Now, that can be an issue because it can really slow down networks. If you are backing up to cloud storage, you're having to upload loads and loads of data to cloud storage. If you're in an office, for example, it might mean the internet is really slow because you are constantly backing up. It can also damage your storage devices if you're constantly writing to them. Again, it can cause things to slow down and potentially break. So often what people do is they'll think about when in the week is a good time to back up their files. So potentially, in a typical office, you might do a full backup at the weekend when nobody's really working and so the network being slow is not that important. But you might feel that actually backing up once a week is not a good idea because of the issue I said of losing updates. So what you might do is something called an incremental backup, which you might do a couple of days a week. Now what an incremental backup is, is they will only back up changes. So a full backup makes a brand new copy of every single file. An incremental backup just looks at the changes and puts the changes on your backup. So it's a smaller backup, but it's just things which have changed since the last backup. A second example of utility software is antivirus. So antivirus will detect and remove malware on the computer. So malware are malicious software, things like viruses, but also things like worms and ransomware. And you can have anti-spyware, 
as a separate bit of software, but it could include that too. Basically, antivirus, despite the name being antivirus, won't just ignore other types of malware. It removes all malware it finds, not just viruses. Now, there's two bits of underlined in the definition, detects and removes are both quite important. Detection is where it's searching for malware on the computer and removing is obviously when it tries to delete it to stop it causing issues. And the detection stage can cause some issues because most antivirus software works by having a big database of known malware. So, when, uh, so Microsoft or Avast or McAfee keep a massive database with loads of malware they find so that in the future they can look for it and check if it exists on the computer. Now the issue can be if you don't update it often because every single day attackers are making new viruses and new worms and new ransomware to try and get around antivirus. If you are not updating your database it means it's very quickly out of date and you might become vulnerable. And now to cover a third and final example which is compression software. It's got a very very small definition. So compression software just simply reduces the size of files. And if you've got smaller files, why is that a good thing? Well, it means you can use up less storage space. If you've got massive movies and massive reports and massive photos, it takes up a lot of space and you might quickly run out of capacity on your storage device. But also a key second advantage, which often people forget, is if you've got a small file, it means it will take less time to download or upload files over networks. Right, you might go on certain websites, which take an age to download, because they haven't compressed it properly. Whereas something like YouTube has got a few different quality levels. Each one is different levels of compression. You know, 360p is quite quick to load. 1080p might take longer. That's because it's got less compression. So for more compression, the smaller file size, but sometimes you might lose some quality. So a key downside is if you are heavily compressing your data, the quality of your video or photo might reduce.